Good morning. This is Kathy Crowder's Mountain. I hope you're all doing well today. And I'm glad you joined me for another video. Today, I thought we would make something kind of fall themed. So, I had a pattern for a cat and I had one for a pumpkin. So, I kind of put them together. And so we're going to have a pumpkin over here and a cat over here. Now, I'm not going to make mine uh, with a Halloween theme, but you could. You could make the cat solid black and then have a pumpkin with a face in it if you wanted to. I'm going more with just the fall theme and let, um, let you think about it from there how to customize your own. So I've got a 24 by 24 piece of paper here that we're going to draw our pattern on. And for this pattern I need three blocks. So I'm dividing three into 24 and getting eight. So I'm going to put a tick mark at eight and one at 16. I'm going to go all the way around and do that on all four sides to make sure I get it straight. And when I get it on all four sides, I'm just going to connect our tick marks. And that's going to give us the blocks that we need. One more. Okay, now all we have to do is connect our dots. I'm pulling that paper down so it won't be, so you can see it in the, in the screen or in the shot. <laughs> That didn't even make a mark, did it? Let me get another. Let me get another marker. You can see this one better. Much better. That's a lot better. Come and write. I'm going to mark this one again so that you can see it. This is a real easy uh, barn quilt to make, and I would think, I mean, I would put it in the category of beginner. I taught, uh, I've taught the pumpkin and I've taught the cat in classes, but never together like this. Okay. So, we have three across and three up. Now here we want, we want to divide these four blocks into quarters. So all we're doing here is just making us a tick mark at four. Measure over here as well. And we're just going to connect those dots as 
so that we can have four blocks in each one of those. See what I'm doing? All we're really doing, I can get my longer ruler now. You see that? Now that's where our pumpkin is going to be. So let's draw the cat first. Okay, for the cat, I'm going to do that one in, I'll do the cat in red so that you can see this is our grid. Alright, so for the cat, we're going to take this this last block over here on the right and we're going to make a tick mark there and then we're going to line our ruler up let's just go ahead and make a tick mark so we can make sure we get it lined up right and I want another tick mark at number four right at four so you got a tick mark here and here that was just the measuring, just to measure by. All right, so let's do his legs first. So I'm going at the tick mark we made in that block and going down to the corner. And I'm gonna do that on the other side as well. See that? All right, now let's go to this block. And we're going to go from that tick mark again up to the top of this block. See that? All right, now you, you remember this little mark that we just made here? We're going to go from that mark back to that corner and from that mark back to this corner. Now that is the little cat's chest. Now here are his legs. All right, now for the, for the cat's face, we're just going to make a big X in this block up at the top. See there? And then this block, fourth row up, fourth block, right here. All we're going to do is make a mark that down that way. And this is going to be part of the cat. We won't be using that, that half of that block. We'll, we'll, we will right here. All right, so that's the cat. But, you know, the eyes, the, the eyes will be in here and its mouth will be right in here. 
but I'll show you that later. Okay, now let's draw the pumpkin. And the pumpkin's just real easy to draw. One block at a time, one row at a time. And I'm going to do that in black so you'll see it. Now, we're just drawing one diagonal line here. And we're going to draw two X, two X marks. I'm trying to get the light to come on over here. Well, I've got a light on over here. I was trying to get it to come on so it wouldn't be so dark on you. Well, I don't know what I've done, but it's not coming on. Sorry, y'all. I think it's light enough that you can see it. But anyway, let's put our two X, X marks here. This is part of the pumpkin pattern. Okay, and then we need a mark. Need a line here. Okay, now let's go back to that first block here. We don't need this part. That's just the background. But this is part of the pumpkin. And we do need to make a line here. Just like if you were going to corner the corner, it's going to go and do it over here too. Just put your ruler corner to corner and go halfway down. Alright, so for this line, this is the middle of our pumpkin, and we just need X marks all the way across on these blocks. you enjoyed these videos I would appreciate it if you would subscribe and let the video play to help me with my watch hours that would help me out a lot okay so we've got we're up here at the third line now And these two need to be the same with that bottom row. I'm just going to make X marks. You see I'm trying to line them up with my other lines. And we need one here. Alright, so in this block we need to do exactly like we did on that bottom row, but we're gonna we're gonna use the bottom half of the you know we half the block, so we're gonna use this bottom one to make our line where we use the top here. Wait a minute. That's right. I thought I messed up. So I just put that in the corner so that I could get my line straight. Alright, now that is the pumpkin. Except for our stem. So, for the stem, I make a mark right on that grid line. And then I'm going to come down like I've got that. I'll flip it over here so you can see the actual measurements. I've got it. That's four inches. So I'm going to go over one inch 
and just draw a line down. And that's going to be the top of my pumpkin. I mean the bottom of the stem. This one is the top of the pumpkin. Now I'm just going to draw a line through across the top and there is the stem. Now you can draw leaves any way that you want to draw them, if you want to freehand them or whatever. I, I don't do that very well. So, And I don't like that big block pumpkin leaf that I've seen before. So this is just what I'm doing. I'm just going to make a simple leaf. About two inches that way. And two inches this way. And that's all I'm going to do. And I'll put another one here. Just a smaller one. You saw how I did that? Okay. And I like that. I like those leaves better. Okay, so that is our cat and our pumpkin. And now we need to put the tail on here. Now you can box off the tail if you want to. Make it just boxy looking. Or you can just freehand it. So for this one, I'm just going to make me a tail that looks sort of like that. And that tail is going to have some stripes. Like that. Now for the for the cat's eyes, uh let's see where did I I'm gonna I'm gonna use um a round sponge and you'll see me doing that. But I'll just make two round circles here to and then a nose. And then we're going to add just some whiskers. And when we're painting them, we'll make them look a little bit better. But I just wanted you to get an idea of where that cat's face was. So, let me get it painted on my board. And we'll, I mean, drawn on our my board. And I will show you as I go along, and some of it I'll speed up so you don't have to just sit there and watch me paint. But this is your cat, if you want to take a screenshot of that to get your pattern. And I will show it to you again in the end. Okay, let's get started. Okay, I'm back. I've got my pattern drawn on my board, and I didn't mention this before, but this is one half inch MDO, that's medium density overlay, and it's made with resin, so it's got like a paper filled front and back to it, and I think you can get it without the coverage on the back. But I, I just have been getting it on both sides because sometimes I like to make um, a barn quilt that I can flip over and use the other side in another season. Okay, so that's about, about it for the wood. Um, I mean, there's a lot more details I could go into, but I won't. And But I put two coats of Kills 3 after I sanded it down just a little, just to make sure there wasn't any blemishes on it, uh, make sure the cut marks and any kind of a, you know, sawdust or whatever was off of the edges, I just sanded it down and wiped it down. And when that dried, I put two coats of kills, three. 
And that's all I did to that board. And then I drew my pattern on it just now. So let me show you my colors. And again, you don't have to use these colors. Just make up the colors that you want or what you have on hand. All right, so let's start at the leaves. All I want is like a dark and a light. So it, if you have a dark and a light, it doesn't matter. It, but I'm using succulent leaves and Vegas green. And most of my paints are semi-gloss, Valspar or Bare. Uh, and I like that Valspar, that Duramax, or the Bare, Bare Premium. Uh, it's got to be exterior, though. I, I, don't, I won't use it if it's not. Other people do, and that's, that's them. But I, I just have to tell you what I do. And so I'm using exterior. All right, so for the stem is natural bark. And just so it's a dark brown, be fine. Now, let's let's look at the cat. <laughs> For my cat, I'm using, you know, it's not to be a Halloween cat. It's going to be like a calico cat. But limousine leather. And I'm using caramel cream for the chest part. I'm using pave stone for his ears up here. And khaki for his face and the part of his back that's right here. I didn't draw my line there, did I? All right, and, and this is going to be black. All right, now that's the cat, because this caramel cream is going right here. All right, for my background, I'm going to wait and show you that pumpkin last. For my background, I'm using Dresden 2. I did that on a couple of them, and I, I like the way that um, it's not a sky blue, but it's not a dark blue either. Um, I just, I really like the way that looked on my background. I don't have one. I don't have one painted that I could stick a picture of it in here right quick. I think all the rest of them have been sold that I had done. Okay, let's see. Now, let's talk about that pumpkin. I needed sort of... Um, you could do like a brown and a light brown, but I didn't, I didn't want to put that in here. So I'm using Crimson Glow and Toasted Cranberry to match. And then I needed two shades of an orange, so I'm using Ultra Orange and Autumn Blaze. Then I needed a yellow and... I know this is sort of like a, I don't know, you could put it into the orange family, I guess, but it's called pumpkin butter, and I just love that color. And then I needed a match for that, and I'm using burning coals. I'm not sure if a match for it's the best thing to say, but I needed a lighter color to go with the lighter color in the yellow. All right, so that's what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to start taping up and start painting. And I'll go over the colors again as I'm painting them. Um, and this is not a hard pattern to tape up at all. But I'm going to use my new tape over here. <laughs> so let me get to taping up some of this. And you notice that now I didn't draw my tail yet. I'm going to do it last. I know I would, I'm going to change the way I did that first one on that pattern, but you just make your little tail the way you want to do it. Put your tail in high gear. <laughs> okay, let me tape up and get the painting.
So the cat's all painted except for his eyes and his whiskers. This is going to be that blue color. And all around here will be the blue. But I taped off the pumpkin because I just thought maybe it would be helpful for you guys to, you could see the outline of it better in the video. And I still have to tape off the individual sections. But what I wanted to do was get my two here. And sometimes people put brown instead of these colors, but I'm going to use these. And hope, hopefully it'll turn out right. I got crimson gold, crim crimson glow, and toasted cranberry. So I'm going to start with the cranberry. And what I like to do when I've got a a lot of blocks and different colors. I'm going to mark where I want that cranberry. So, I'm going to do this one, this one, this one, this one. And, and see, I'm playing with this. This is the my little... Uh, mock-up that I did on graph paper and so that's that's what I'm using as my guide I had 11 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Missing one. That one. Got it. Okay. That's just an easier way for me. And since I'm using these heat erasable pens, it's no problem to make that mark. Y'all can see it, right? See where I made my marks? I just put a C for cranberry. All right, now I'm gonna tape those up. And this this would be um, where you could, you could even cut this tape in half, the half inch but I'm not going to. I'm just going to flip it around and use both sides. Okay, I've got all the cranberry on there. That's the predominant color in this pumpkin. There was 11 blocks of the cranberry. So, I think the rest of them are like three and four blocks. So I'll get all that taped up, painted, and then I'll come back and let you see the finished product. But I'm, the way I did it before, I'm gonna go ahead like this crimson, I'll put a C in the few that I'm going to paint crimson. And then I'll get that finished and then I'll come back along with the pumpkin butter. And I'll put a P or something like that. Um, and you can actually, if you don't have the heat erasable pens, you can really just put just a dab real thin. Don't put it too thick or you'll have like a ridge in there or a bump. Uh, of paint, but just something real thin that you can mark it with. Or you could actually mark it, uh, you know, take a little piece of your tape and stick it on there. And that way you'll know 
which one you're doing next. Lots of little tricks like that you can use. You don't have to go out and buy anything special. All right. Oh, before I get started, let me show you something funny. If I can pull it up, I don't know if you can see it or not. But my husband was on the way to the post office just now, and some folks on the side of the mountain over here had a flat tire, and, you know, the tire was just wore out. So he, he's gone to the tire store to buy him one. And he showed me a, a picture of our dog. I don't know if you can see Woody or not. <laughs> He's supervising. We found him in the woods, so we named him Woody. I don't know if you can see him or not. He just looks so funny sitting up in the car watching them people work. <laughs> I thought y'all would get a kick out of that. I'll be back when I'm finished with the pumpkin. Okay, I've got the pumpkin butter, that's this yellow color, and I'm getting ready to put the orange, which is ultra orange. That's these spots right here, I've got five, and I had five of the uh, pumpkin butter as well. So when I get that finished, I'll be ready to put the autumn belays. And we'll be finished with our pumpkin. And I can't wait to see what it looks like with that background. All right. Hang on, we're almost done. Got that last color on. Just thought I'd pop in here and let you see what it's looking like. Get the other two coats. And we'll be ready. I'm not sure if I'm going to do the background and then the stem and the leaves or the leaves and that stem first. I'll probably do that next. you got to get a good idea of what it's going to look like then. All right, we're getting there. Okay, the pumpkin is done. I'm going to start working on the leaf. Get you into the focus here. Sorry. All right. I'm going to start working on that stem and these leaves. And for the stem, remember we're going to use natural bark. And I'm going to have a light and a dark green. So I got succulent leaves and Vegas green. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to, what I'm going to do. This is the way I did it before. I'm going to paint the background with this Dresden, Dresden 2. And then I'm going to draw that cattail. And paint it. Because all that will be is just like a background color for it. It will just show up better. Or another layer of paint, whatever you want. However... 
whatever terminology you guys use. <laughs> All right. You see, I started taping up that cap while I was letting the uh, paint tape cool down. That's an, I think I've said that before. When you when you're drying with these little heat tools, just make sure all that's cooled down before you pull that tape off. And don't think that I got this just like this to start with. I'd already done my touch-ups before I came back. Looks like a cat has some problems right now instead of a cat and a pumpkin. <laughs> I'll be back in a minute. That just looks weird, don't it? Okay, I got the pumpkin finished. And you see I've got the leaves. I got a little bit of touch up right there. But I got the stem on. And while I was waiting for some of that to cool down, I painted some of the blue. And that's just where the sections were not touching each other. If you start, if you start taping off right in the middle of a big section, you're going to have a ridge. And you don't want that. But right here is where it stopped. And this was all along, and this was standalone, so... It was okay. It was it was not going to leave a ridge if I did that. So I went ahead and finished that part. Now I'm going to tape up all in here and put my blue there and we'll be finished except for the cat's face. So I'll be back in just a little while and I'll show you how to do that cat's face. Okay, got all the blue on, got to take care of the eyes and the nose and the whiskers, and here are my leaves underneath that, and I'm going to use this little pick to try to pick it off so I don't scratch it too bad, and hopefully the paint don't come off. Okay, we're going to finish it up. Some of that paint did peel, so I've, I redid that section of that leaf. So while it's drying, we're going to finish the cat's face. So what I'm going to do with my yard, well it's a two foot ruler. I'm putting it in the corner up here and right here. Now, I'm doing that because I want my eyes to be spaced exactly right. So I'm going to make a mark at 24. Well, that's... Let me show you another way because that, that was... What is that metric on the other side? So it's at seven and a half. So I made the mark at seven and a half. And I'm going to go over here and do the same thing. Well, let me flip it around now. And that will be 17 and a half because I'm coming off of 24 here. Okay, so that will get my eyes in the right place. Now, I'm going to use this same uh, green for my cat's eyes. I have some brighter green over there. Hey, I got the cat's tail all taped up and it's going to be striped. So that's what those bars are going across. So I'm painting it black and I get that tail finished 
we're going to be done. I was going to tell you the tape that I used on that tail was like a quarter inch wide. Now, it didn't make the turns and curves as good as that little eight, eighth of an inch wide tape that I have. And I probably should have used that, but I didn't. So I'm sure when I pull that off, I'll have some little places that I have to touch up. But that's okay. I think it's going to turn out all right. But I just wanted to jump back on here and tell you that. Let me give you another little tip while I'm at it. You see that blue line that's going here? That's where I drew the tail all the way up through here. I drew the tail with that heat erasable pen. Okay, now I'm going to get rid of that, but unless I take some of this blue paint and paint over it, it will show up. If somebody puts this barn quilt outside and it gets cold, that line will show back up. The only way, even though I've gotten rid of it, when it gets cold enough, it'll come back unless you paint over top of it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to paint over top of that spot. I'm going to get rid of it, but then I know where it's at. So I'm going to put just a little bit of paint up through there and cover it up so that it it doesn't show back up. That's where some of the confusion comes in about those heat erasable pens. Here is that 1 8 inch tape that I was talking about. And do you see how much better this looks? It's so much easier to manipulate and make the curves than that wider tape, even though it was a fourth inch. Now, you know, I've got to tape that up. And I'll put the... I think I'm going to go with that paved stone in there with, with that. Um, black. But anyway, I just wanted to show you that how much easier that one eighth inch tape is to work with. Okay, here she is. She's finished. Except I just don't know if I like this or not. I'm debating about painting it black. Now this is where a piece of construction paper would come in. You could cut that out in black construction paper and lay it down to see what you think about it. And I'm really, I'm thinking I'm going to paint it black because it would match the tail over here. And I think there's enough of a definition here where you could still tell it was the part of the cat's shoulder. Let's do that and I'll be back. Okay, what do you think? You like it better that way? Or the other way? That's what you can do with your barn quilts. You can decide what colors you want them, even if you see a pattern or some way someone else has painted it. Just kind of make it your own and use the paints that you have, and it'll turn out good. Okay, well, here she is. There's our cat. And this one is available if you're interested in purchasing it. Uh, I'll leave my email below in the description and you can just email me and we'll take it from there. I'll talk to you guys later and I'll see you in the next video.